Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, my name is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, calebcurry.com. Uh, this video will be your introduction to database design. We're pretty much going to cover a lot of a lot of everything. So this is going to be a great series if you're just starting out or if you want to get a broad overview of everything, then yeah, stick with this. If you want to know more about the series, check out my introduction. Otherwise, let's get rolling. So, database design. Before we talk about database design, let's first talk about a database. Because we can't design a database if we don't know what a database is. That doesn't even make sense. So, what is a database? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. Well, I can actually tell you what a database is. And that's what this video is about. So, a database is something that stores data. Alright, another vague term data. And I want you to guys, I want all of you to think about data very broadly. Don't think too specific. Think of data as anything we can store in a database or anything we can write down, anything that has a value. It can be anything. Data can be the list of every single customer of your store since 1995. Or it can be a list of every single transaction in a online shopping center. Or it can be a list of every user and their username. Or it could be a list of every single weather event since 1927. It can be pretty much anything. It doesn't have to do with specific people. Data is so broad. So database is obviously broad too. Because a database stores data. So yeah, just think of it like this. Here we have a database. A base is where we store data. Pretty simple. Alright, so now that's pretty b vague and I'm not sure if that was very helpful. So now let's break it down to where we see it from a technical standpoint. Everything in this world, not everything, but almost everything, is ran from a back end database. It's what stores all of our information. So, for example, I like to use websites for examples because they're very clear and they're very easy to understand the concept of this. When you go to a website and you sign up, you, you give them a username, you give them a password, and you give them an email. All of that, when you sign in the next time, it allows you to sign in. Well, how did that website remember what your username, email, and password was? That's because all of this information that you put in when you registered well, all of these values are given to a database. So here you can say is our database. Sorry for my craptastic handwriting, but don't, don't even worry about it. This is what's said to be the front end. This is said to be the back end. That's because we don't necessarily see what's going on back here. We can put in our email, our username, and our password, and it can get stored in this database. That way, when we come back again and we log in, we give them a username and a password, it takes that value, it checks it with the database to allow you to get into the account. That is a perfect example of a database. So a database can store that information, but it's not limited to only registration. You can use this to store all of your records of sales in a store and all so forth. It just goes on. Don't think of it as a limited thing because there's so many things you can do with the database. So many things. Next question you may be asking is how does it differ from like a spreadsheet for example. So a spreadsheet, basically if you don't really know much about spreadsheets, it's basically where you have columns and then we have rows and we can store information about like we can enter the values for each column. Spreadsheets are good if that's what you need, if you're a very small company, excuse me. But if you want to get to any complexity where you can, like imagine if we wanted to select, let's say this was a spreadsheet for all of my employees. I own a huge business with 100 employees. And I want to select every single employee who has missed less than three days and have been an employee for at least three years and I want to give them a $100 bonus. Well that's something, if I had a spreadsheet I'd have to manually go through that, check every single value, that's not gonna work because that times money in business. 
But anyways, with a database, we can run queries to get those kind of values to figure out which employees have been a member, a employee for three years and have only missed three days or less. So that's how it differs from a spreadsheet. Basically, what you can do with it. If you have a spreadsheet with ten employees, or like I'm sorry, with ten values, and that's like you can figure out all of your information in a couple of seconds. Well, then you might not need a database. That's up to you. The other thing is with with uh, spreadsheets, it's it's um it's either like all data or no data. Let's say I just this stored every single detail about every single employee that I had, and all I wanted was their name and their address. Well, we can't really do that easily with a spreadsheet unless we take all those columns and like copy and paste and all this extra garbage or find some algorithm to do things fancily. If you know what you're doing, you can probably do it. But with a database, we can selectively choose which columns. So we can say only these two columns do we want returned, and we can ignore the rest. On top of that, we can allow different users to access different information. Back to the website example, we had users page, and then we had a database. When here, you put your username, email, and password. That's stored on a database, but that's not necessarily the only thing that's stored on a database. A user might only get to access that, but a database administrator might get to access when they registered, the transactions they've made on your shopping website, or what they've watched, what, what they've viewed, uh, the comments they've made, how often they visit the web page. It's pretty much limitless to what you want to do with the database. So, we can see that two different users. This person only gets to view some things of the database. This person can only can view pretty much anything. With a spreadsheet, it's kind of all or nothing. Do you have access to the spreadsheet? Yes, I do. Well, here it is. If you don't have access, well, then too bad. You don't get any of it. So, that, that's awesome. That's a security feature as well because you don't want this person to get all of the hidden information that's stored within this database. So hopefully that makes things pretty darn clear. Uh, the next video I'll kind of be talking about how data is stored in a database because I, didn't, I was going to get into that in this video but I kind of ran out of time. But for the sake of just your understanding if you decide not to watch the second video, which you will watch the second video, right? Relations, that's a term where we get the term relational database. So uh, this series is for what's known as a relational database. That is a specific kind of database, and that's going to be most of the relation. That's going to be most of the databases that you work with if you're working with database design. So in the next video, we will be getting into what relational means and why it's useful. Why is, why is it a good database system? Why do we need a relational database? That's what we'll be talking about. So thank you guys for watching and be sure to subscribe and click like on this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.